Now I am going to be talking about social and emotional learning and culturally uh, responsive classroom management in my code of conduct and discipline model. Um, I'm so excited for this part of the website because I believe social emotional learning and the culture piece of the classroom are the most important parts of the classroom, the driving force of the success, happiness, and inclusion of our kids. Uh, like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I believe that until kids feel safe, welcome, um, and like their classroom that they're in, they will not be successful in learning the curriculum because feeling cared for and loved comes before fractions in addition. Um, so with that being said, I kept the social and emotional learning piece and uh, the culturally responsive classroom management uh, in mind when I was curating my code of conduct and um, my discipline model theory and approach. So let's start with the code of conduct. Um, right off the bat, number one, most important driving force of my classroom is we will treat all members of the classroom with kindness. There is no stuttering, no buffer, no room for anything else here. Uh, I believe in kindness to ourselves, to our peers, uh, to the materials in the room, to the teacher, to everyone. Everyone should be treated with kindness. There's no reason to not be nice to anyone. Everyone deserves kindness because we are all human beings. Um, now, with that being said, that goes with culturally, culturally responsive classroom management because this has no race, no identity, no gender, no religion, no color. Kindness is kindness, and we will treat each other as such. We do not see color, we do not see race, we do not see how tall you are, what your weight is, where you're from, what you believe in. We treat each other with kindness and how we would wanna be treated. Um, and that helps kids tap into their emotions. How would you feel if someone treated you like this? The golden rule, treat others how you would want to be treated with kindness. Um, we will be responsible for our own learning is the next rule. Um, and now this taps into social and emotional learning because kids need to learn how to regulate their emotions um, and their work ethic and their expectations. If kids can't regulate their own emotions, they're not going to be able to be responsible for their own work. They need to learn how they function, what works for them, what models work for them, what learning strategies, what styles, um, and how that can help them, how those methods can help them be an effective member of our classroom. Um, so how can they best help themselves and self-regulate to be a member of the classroom? This fits into the cultural piece because again, this is something all students can do. This has nothing to do with gender or race or religion. All students can be responsible for their work and I'll hold all students to that expectation because they are all capable. Uh, rule number three is a lot like number one. We will respect ourselves, our classmates, and our school. Uh, the social and emotional learning kind of goes further in this, as in we are focusing on respecting others. Because an important part of our emotions is learning how to control them and contain them. Use I messages. Don't go hit someone because that's not respecting the other person. Don't throw classroom materials. That's not respecting our classroom. Don't bang your head on the desk when you get frustrated. That's not respecting yourself. We need to learn how to control ourselves and our emotions and respond in a positive way, such as using I messages. I felt really sad when you took that toy car from me. We can use these messages to clarify what we mean in a respectful, calm, peaceful manner that kids are pointing across. Uh, again, with the culture, everyone can do this. This does not exclude anyone. This is not limited to anyone. This can be utilized by everyone in the classroom. And I will hold these expectations to everyone. We are all able to do this. Um, we will use our ears to listen to our teachers and our classmates. Another part of social emotional learning is listening to others, listening to their eye messages, how they feel, what your actions cause them to feel. Um, and now this is a good cultural piece because as a teacher, it's us listening to our kids. They feel that we are treating them different because of their skin or what they believe in. We take that and we change it. We don't want anyone to feel like that. We listen to our kids like we expect them to listen to us. We listen to their background, where they come from, what they believe in, what their family style is like. We take all of these things and help tailor our education and our curriculum to them to help them be most successful. And then we share our stories. We listen to each other and share our stories. So not only does this build a positive classroom community where we understand and listen to one another, but we understand where people are coming from 
and we can create connections and form bonds. So listening is a big one that I love. Um, and last but not least, we will come to school with a positive attitude ready to learn because part of our emotions, um, now I'm not saying it's not okay to feel sadness and anger, but we try. We try to come in positive. We try to work hard. We try to be happy. Um, I will fully acknowledge all my students' emotions and I want them to be in touch. But at the end of the day, I want them to try to put their best foot forward and be positive and come into school ready to learn. Again, this is something all our kids can do. I want all my kids to be happy, successful learners um, who are contributing members to my classroom community. And now when we look at the discipline models, the different approaches in the discipline models, these fit in with social emotional learning and cultural um, classroom regulation and management. So one with punishment um, or penalty, sorry, I'm sorry, penalty. When kids are given clear expectations and consequences and they don't follow those expectations, the consequences, if appropriate, are allowed to be given to the kids. I believe this is part of becoming a human being, a functioning human being, because guess what? We might feel sad and upset and angry, but it was our choice not to follow the expectation or direction set in front of us. We need to learn that when we don't do something, our consequences occur. And that's part of becoming emotionally in touch and realizing, hey, I don't like how it feels when I don't follow the rules. I'm gonna follow the rules. Um, again, this is something all students can do and something we can add to all parts of our classroom. Um, so next is rewards. And I think rewards are important because they show the positives. You are doing great behavior. You are having great emotions. You are sharing and using iMessages. I'm proud of what actions you are taking. So I'm going to reward that and can try to continue that behavior. Um, I know that sometimes when the reward stops, the behavior stops, but our hopes are that we just do it because we're a good person um, and the rewards are a bonus. Um, and all students, again, can participate in this. And I will be fair to all students. I won't just favor one student or all the girls in the class because they listen over the boys. No, this is something reward will go to all students and penalty, equal fair expectations. And finally, win-win, taking the time to listen and communicate and talk about problems Hello, that is social emotional regulation, talking, communicating, learning where we went wrong and fixing that through communication that builds the social, social and emotional piece kids need to learn how it made me feel, how it made them feel, how we can work and continue and solve this problem together. Um, and that also fits in with a culturally responsive classroom, because if a student is telling me this makes them feel something, well, how does their background impact them on this? What? pieces of their culture might impact this. How can I become a better teacher, learn from this, talk and communicate with them so we can solve the problem? Not only does it go for classroom problems inside, but also fam familial issues, background, where they come from, something's different. Oh, like let's just say for example, in their uh, student's culture, they are told not to look the teacher in the eyes. I think I used this example before. Um, but I as a teacher find that disrespectful hey, well, that's a problem. Let's win-win, talk about it, sit down, um, have shared responsibility between the teacher and the student, democratic classroom, and talk about this and come to a solution working to understand one another. Uh, I could go on forever because, <laughs> because I just think social um, and emotional learning and cultural responsiveness in the classroom are essential pieces to a successful functioning classroom. And without these pieces, you're missing it. Your kids aren't gonna learn until they feel cared for, understood, respected, heard, and happy to be where they are in your classroom. So I hope these methods work and I can't wait to learn more. Thanks.